Foxworthy, and I want to give away $1 million tonight if somebody can prove that they are smarter than a fifth grader. Let's meet our class, Cody! Your new classmate? Yeah! He is a 37-year-old financial advisor from Berkeley, California, who attended Columbus Elementary. Welcome, Andrew Bannon! Andrew, how are you? Welcome to the show. Oh, wow! Look at this. You must have had a lot of girls back in the fifth grade. I actually did have a few in the fifth grade. Girlfriend. That was when I started. Wow, now what kind of student <laughs> were you? Um, I was actually a really good student. Were you really? I did well, yeah, I did. I, uh, I, I, I'm always. assuming that you were because you have a BA in history from UCLA. That's correct. All right. And a, and a master's in finance from USC. That's right. Yeah, I'm a trader. I thought that was against the law. Well, you know, it's uh, I cut both bases covered across town. Yeah, so you, you do. I, I don't know that I've ever met anybody that went to both. Wow, this impresses me more than anything else. You helped your fifth grade teacher correct tests. That's correct. I was that smart. You were that smart yeah, in the fifth grade. I was grade. a lot smarter than the other fifth graders. Well, I hope some of this is still in there, that fifth grade knowledge. Because me too. we have not given away a million dollars in this classroom yet. Maybe tonight is going to be the night. <laughs> Well, do you, have, do you have the million dollar question ready? I, I've got the million dollar question loaded in get already. Get it queued up. All yes, right, I'm it's queued up. Let's just get to it, all, all right? All right, let's get to it. You have some new fifth grade classmates. They're going to be taking the same test you're taking. You can cheat right. off of them. Pick one of them and let's get started, Andrew. Let's go with Cody to start Cody, off. Cody, come on up here. You a UCLA guy or a USC guy? I'm a USC guy. USC guy. All well, right. I can cheer for both. You can cheer for both. Andrew, let me tell you how this little test works. On the board, you're going to see 10 subjects. Your first correct answer will be worth $1,000. Your 10th correct answer is worth $500,000. All right. You get that far, as we mentioned. The one million dollar question is already loaded into the computer. Yeah, that's okay. What I want to hear. You want to hear it? Oh yeah. You get these ten right, we will give you that question, and it's worth one million dollars. Yeah! Woo! Bring on the million! Now I imagine the guy that has a master's has taken a few tests in his life. I've taken a lot of tests. Now, if you just get up and walk out of a test, usually you get in trouble. And here we allow you to do that. You can drop out. You can take the money that you've won and you can leave us. But before you go, there is one little stipulation. See that camera? Yep. You have to promise me that you will look right into it and tell the entire world I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Okay, but I don't think that's going to happen, so I hope Oh, I hope you're right. Let's find out. Is Andrew Button smarter than a fifth grader? Now, I know you helped the teacher grade the papers, but when you were in the fifth grade, what was your best subject? Uh, I think it was always math. Math was, I was always just real math strong. Math guy. Well, your financial suit. advisor. Yeah. Worst subject? Worst subject was probably English. Math and it. What's your best subject? Math. Math. All right, it's your pick, Andrew. Pick one of them. Let's play for $1,000. All, right, all right. Let's take uh, first grade spelling. First grade spelling. All right. The $1,000 question is this. The name of which month of the year comes first alphabetically? The name of which month of the year comes first alphabetically? Cody has locked in his answer. Okay, the name of which month of the year comes first alphabetically? So. I will go with uh, April as my answer, and I will lock it. Of course, 
Yes, it does. You're right. You All got right. a thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. Nothing to it. No, this is easy. Nothing to it. This All right, you got easy. a thousand. Let's double it real quick. Pick okay. another subject. Let's do it. All right. Uh, let's go. Let's go with uh, second grade grammar. Second grade grammar. Yeah. All right. Andrew, the two thousand dollar question is this. What is the subject of the sentence, Sierra baked a cake for Olivia? A pronoun, a proper noun, or a common noun? What is the subject of the sentence, Sierra baked a cake for Olivia? A pronoun, a proper noun, or a common noun? Cody has locked in his answer. Okay. I would have said delicious, but that's not yeah, one of the yeah, possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> what so, is the subject of the sentence? Sierra baked a cake for Olivia. A pronoun, proper noun, or a common so noun? So it looks to me like the subject is, I would guess that the subject is cake. And so I would say that um, cake is a common noun, and I'm pretty sure about that. So, Jeff, I'm gonna lock in C, common noun. So here's where we're at. Cake is a common noun, but cake is not the subject of the sentence. That's not good. I know you brought some people here with you today. Do you want to introduce them real quick? Uh, I've got my wife, my beautiful wife. Uh, oh, the wow. shirt over there, yeah. Donna. Hey, Donna, how are her, you? Her parents are right next to her. And, your and then I got a, a bunch of girls in the family. Oh, here. wow. Yeah. You look like my family, just girls everywhere. Yeah, lots of girls. How do you feel about this right now? He needs help. <laughs> he needs help. Does anybody know what the subject of the sentence is? Sierra. Sierra is the subject. I should have known that. The subject. Darn, Sierra's right there. I should have known that. God. The subject in a sentence is the thing that does the action. In this case, Sierra baked a cake for Olivia. You have your subject and your predicate. Sierra is a proper noun. So, if Cody said proper noun, you've got $2,000. Come on, Cody. If he didn't, this UCLA and USC grad is flunking out on a second grade question. Oh, that would be tough to handle. And making not one, but two colleges very proud in the process. <laughs> Come on, Cody. You gotta help me out, man. Did Cody say proper noun? We're gonna see his answer right after this. Be sure to catch the next episode of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? We are celebrating certified American heroes. That's right, we're giving the million dollar chance of a lifetime to someone who really deserves it. Our contestant saved an elderly woman from a burning building. Thank you. But when this officer puts his medal to the test. I'm ready, Jeff. Will he risk tarnishing his spotless reputation? Take a deep breath, we'll get out of this, all right? Next time, don't miss American Heroes Night. Are you smarter than a fifth grader with Andrew yeah! Bunnan going for $2,000? We'll return right after this. Our contestant, Andrew Bunning, has $1,000. He is playing for $2,000. The question was, what is the subject of the sentence, Sierra baked a cake for Olivia? A pronoun, a proper noun, or a common noun? Andrew, you said common noun. You were wrong. Gosh. 
The correct answer is B, proper noun. So, if Cody said proper noun, you've got $2,000. Come on, Cody. If he didn't, this UCLA and USC grad is flunking out on a second grade question. Oh, that would be tough to handle. Did Cody say proper noun? Take a look at the board. Cody said... A pronoun, Andrew. Oh my goodness. Second grade. You told me to cue up the million dollar question. I did. And we didn't get past the second grade. Oh. I can't believe it. I'm in shock. I'm in shock as well. I am. Just for fun, do you want to see the million dollar question? Sure. Absolutely. What now, what subject? Did you, because I, I know you had to think this out. What, math would have been the, You would have gone for it if it was math. I would have, yeah. The subject of the million dollar question would have been math. Uh, you would have gone for, you said, you darn. would have gone for math, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, math All right. was a go. All right, let's Green pretend line. you got 500,000 in your All pocket. Right. You said, I'm, I'm rolling the dice, we're going for math. Okay. The million dollar question would have been, if Sierra has 10 index cards numbered 11 through 20, and she draws one card, what is the probability that the card will have a prime number on it? If Sierra has 10 index cards numbered 11 through 20, and she draws one card, what is the probability that the card will have a prime number on it. So, 11 is a prime number, and 13's a prime number, and 17's a prime number, and 19's a prime number. So, I would go with uh, the probability is 40%, and I'd lock that in. Yeah! You would have been the first millionaire on the show. You are exactly right. It is 40%. God, second grade grammar. Oh my Killing gosh. Me. Here is a lesson to all you kids watching. Pay attention in school, even if it is the second grade, because it can cost you a million dollars. Andrew, what a pleasure to meet you. One last piece of business. Yep. There's the camera. Remember our deal. My name's Andrew Bunnan, and I may have an MBA from USC, but I am clearly not smarter than a fifth grader. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Oh, my God. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Are you guys ready to meet your new classmate? Yeah. He is a 35-year-old small business owner from Evanston, Illinois. He attended Westwood Elementary. Welcome, Tommy Labuda. Tommy, how are you? Welcome to the show. How are you? From Evanston, Illinois. Yes, sir. This is Tommy in the fifth grade. Oh, boy. What a good-looking guy. Did you did you just have the little bang flick back sure, there? Yeah. yeah. A little, little come over, a little, little flip there. All right, you've got five new classmates. Right, right. You're going to be taking the same test that they're taking. You can right. cheat off of them, pick one of them. Let's get started. All right. Uh, I'm going to pick Sierra. Sierra, come on up here. Now, do you have any kids? I do. I have a two year old, and uh, I have one on the way. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Very Your wife is here? My wife is right over there, yeah. Hi. Love my yeah. belly. My wife. Here. Oh, you look great. Thank you. Well, you know what? You got one and one on the way. We need a little money, oh, don't we? Oh, boy, we sure do. Let's see if we can win some today. Let me All tell right. you how the test works. On the board, you're going to see 10 subjects. 
Now, at any point, this test proves to be too difficult. You can drop out of school and take the money and run, but before you do, one little piece of business you and I have to take care of. Yes. You have to promise me that you will look into that camera and tell the entire world I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Got a deal? We got, got a deal? deal? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Let's find out, is Tommy Labuda smarter than a fifth grader? All right. If you have to help Mr. Labuda, what would you recommend? Earth science and uh, U.S. history. Earth science and U.S. history. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start with second grade vocabulary. Second grade vocabulary. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. I like that. Let's start yeah. a little closer to yeah, the bottom. Yeah, yeah. We'll take it easy. All right. Listen carefully, Tommy. The one thousand dollar question is this. Which of the following words means in addition? Two, two, or two? And we will not accept two as an answer. <laughs> Which of the following words means in addition? T-O, T-W-O, or T-O-O? -O? Sierra has locked in her answer. I know this one. Uh, this is great, perfect. Um, I'm going to lock in uh, with C, T-O-O. -O. That's what Sierra said, and great minds think alike. You got a thousand dollars, Tommy. All right. Beautiful. <laughs> Nothing to it. Nothing to it. We Nothing to it. Here we go. Let's double that thousand right now. Pick another subject. I'm gonna go with first grade English. First grade English. All right. For $2,000, the first grade English question is, in the English alphabet, how many consonants are there between the letters E and O? In the English alphabet, how many consonants are there between the letters E and O? Sierra has locked in her answer. Talk it out. Okay, in the English alphabet, how many consonants are there between the letters E and O? And I think I know this unless I'm a complete idiot. Uh, I'm gonna lock it in and I'm gonna say eight. And you said, I think I know it unless what? Unless I'm an idiot, which is highly possible. You sell yourself short. There are eight consonants All between right. E yeah. and O. Right. You got $2,000. Nice work. All right. And Sierra could have saved you. There it is. F G H. J-K-L-M-N. Very good. I'm impressed. Thank you. All right. Well, these guys can only help you a couple of questions at a time, so All you right. need to pick a new classmate. All right. Uh, I'm going to pick Olivia. Olivia, come yeah. on up here. All right, let's go. Eight subjects on the board. You need to pick one of them so we can turn 2,000 into 5,000. What are you good at? Well, I, I like anatomy, but then also earth science and geography. All right, we'll go with first grade anatomy. First grade anatomy, all right. All right. The first grade anatomy question worth $5,000 is if Olivia bumps her funny bone, what joint did she hit? <laughs> if Olivia bumps her funny bone, what joint did she hit? Olivia has locked in. What you thinking, Tommy? You ever bumped your funny bone? Quite a few times. Quite a few times. Uh, if Olivia bumps her funny bone, you know, I want to say 
the elbow. Um, well, here's the good news. You've got everything left. You've got your copy, your peak, and your save. So if you think you know it and you're wrong, perhaps your classmate can save you. Gotcha. You know what, I'm gonna just lock it in. I'm gonna say elbow. Well, I told you, you still have your save left. Yeah. You don't need it. You're absolutely right. right. It's the elbow. You got $5,000. We're playing for $10,000 right after this. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Tommy Labuda, has got $5,000. He's got both of his cheats and his save left. Pick a subject and let's go win $10,000. Okay. I'm gonna go with uh, third grade earth science. Third grade earth science, you like that, Olivia? All right. Come on, baby. For $10,000, the third grade earth science question is, true or false, adding salt to water lowers its freezing point? True or false, adding salt to water lowers its freezing point? Olivia has locked in her answer. True or false, adding salt to water lowers its freezing point. Hmm. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna peak. I'm gonna go for the peak. All right. Do you have thoughts one way or the other before we take a look at her paper? I wanna say true, Okay. but uh, I'm not too sure. All Just right. a guess. So we want to ask a 10-year-old. <laughs> Question, true or false, adding salt to water lowers its freezing point. Your fifth grade classmate said true. Well. Oh, wow. She locked it in pretty quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with true. I'm gonna lock it in. Now you grew up in Illinois. Yes, sir. Imagine you saw a few cold winters there. Yeah. A few snowy driveway days. Yes, sir. What did you put on the sidewalk in the driveway? Salt. Because? It lowers the freezing point of water. It is true, and you got $10,000. Yes. All right. Woo. Way to go, Olivia. All right. Okay, we, we need to get the next one right. Yeah. Because if you had flunked out up until this point, you would have left us with nothing. Nothing. Don't yeah. want to see that happen. You got a little one and a little one on the way. Got it. You get this one right. You're walking out of here with no less than $25,000. All right, all right, yeah. Pick another classmate, Tommy. Uh, I'm taking Nathan. Nathan, come on up here. What's up, man? Nathan, what do you think your two best subjects are? I like history and math. You like history and math, huh? Yeah. For the fourth grade and the fourth fifth grade, grade right, of course he does. You know what? I'm not gonna get bullied. I'm going with I'm going with third grade measurements. Third grade measurements, all right. All right, all right. I want to see you walk out of here with a million bucks, but I really want to see you walk out of here with at least twenty-five thousand. Okay, let's get this one right. All right. The twenty-five thousand dollar question is in Roman numerals. The letter L means 50, but what unit of measurement does L stand for in the metric system? In Roman numerals, the letter L means 50, but what unit of measurement does L stand for in the metric system? 
Nathan has locked in his answer. Um, I will tell you this, it's not lots and lots. Right, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna say it's leader, and uh, I'm gonna lock it in. There are some great minds that are notoriously bad spellers. I want to show what Sierra said. Leader. <laughs> Cody, how do you spell leader? It's spelled L-I-T-E-R. L-I-T-E-R. Cody, how do you know that that's how leader's spelled? Did you write down leader? Yeah. Did you write down leader? Yes. You? Yes. Nathan? Everybody in the room is right. You got $25,000. How about that? Feeling good. We got two fifth grade, two fourth grade, one second grade question. I'm gonna go second grade U.S. geography. Second grade U.S. geography. Amazing. No reason not to answer this one. If you miss it, you still have 25,000. You have a smart classmate at the podium. For $50,000, can we please see the second grade U.S. geography question? Omaha is the most populous city in what U.S. state? Omaha is the most populous city in what U.S. state? Your classmate Nathan has locked in his answer. I'm ready to lock in too. Um, I feel good. Omaha's in uh, Nebraska. I'm gonna lock in Nebraska. <laughs> Feelings mutual. You got fifty thousand yeah. dollars, Tommy. All right. Yes. Yes. All Way right. to go, Nathan. All right. Here's what's cool to me. We've had doctors in here. We've had college professors in here. We've had USC MBAs in here. <laughs> A lot of them walked out with a lot less than $50,000. You're about to play for $100,000. Right. Tommy, yes, sir. there's only four subjects before the million dollar question. Yeah. Pick another classmate, let's tackle All right, him. I'll take you, Mackenzie. Let's Mackenzie, go. Mackenzie, come on up here. Let's do it. Yeah. What are you good at? Um, everything but math. Everything but math, okay? Click. Hey, what math? All right, we'll go with fourth grade U.S. history. Fourth grade U.S. history. You okay with that? You good with that one? All right. The fourth grade U.S. history question worth $100,000 is coming up when we come back. Our contestant, Tommy Labuda, is doing awesome. He has got $50,000. You selected fourth grade U.S. history. The $100,000 question is, the beginning of the U.S. Civil War was marked by the April 12th, 1861 Confederate attack on what Union fort in South Carolina? The beginning of the U.S. Civil War was marked by the April 12, 1861 Confederate attack on what Union Fort in South Carolina? Your classmate Mackenzie has locked in her answer. Ah, uh, wow. Huh. All right, while you're thinking about it, let me tell you what your options are. Yes, sir. Your fifth grade classmate locked in pretty quickly. You could copy her paper, which means you must go with her answer. 
If you had a guess and you were wrong, and she was right, she could still save you. You could drop out of school right now with $50,000. But I would love to see you keep going. You're in great shape here. All right, you know what? I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy. I'm gonna copy. Come on! That was gutsy. The beginning of the U.S. Civil War was marked by the April 12, 1861 Confederate attack on what Union Fort in South Carolina? The correct answer is Fort Sumter. If McKenzie said Fort Sumter, you have $100,000. If she said anything else, you have $25,000, a $75,000 swing. <laughs> Is Labuda feeling lucky? Feeling lucky, I'm feeling good. I feel like she might know this one. Tommy, take a look at the board. It all came down to this. For $100,000, McKenzie said, the words for me. Say, I have $100,000. I have $100,000. How about that? <laughs> Feel good. That's a good day's That's work. That's a good day's work right there. The million dollar question is only three subjects away. Let's keep it moving. Let's, Pick a uh, subject. Let's go, for, let's go uh, fourth grade math. Fourth grade math. <laughs> All right. Do not hit the gotcha. button too yeah. quickly. The fourth grade math question worth $175,000 is... It's a classroom club question. Okay, all right. Jake from Hespy Oak School sent this question in, and Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader is sending Jake's school a computer lab. How about that? That's great. All right. For $175,000, here is the fourth grade math question. True or false, the only factors of nine are one and nine. True or false, the only factors of nine are one and nine. Mackenzie has locked in her answer. The great thing is the $175,000 question is a true or false question. Not asking you to pull up some date or name a famous composer. It's just a true or false question. You do still have your save left. So if you think you know it and you're wrong, perhaps your classmate can save you. Uh, I'm gonna say false and lock it in. <laughs> Tommy. True or false, on, the man. only factors of nine are one and nine. You said? False. Why did you say false? Because there's uh, another factor. Which is? Three. You're right. You got $175,000. Man, you're 
You're killing me. Tommy, you got 175 grand. This is rare air. We are down to your last classmate. Cody, come Cody, on up. Cody, let's in. do it, man. Nice. Now, we, we have had a lot of new classmates for you guys. How often do we get this far in the test? Not very often. Not very often. Tommy, you tell me how much we're playing for next. Doing for 300 right now. $300,000. All right. We are playing for $300,000 right after this. It is a fun night in the classroom. Tommy Labuda from Evansville, Illinois has got $175,000. All right. He is down to the last classmate, Cody. Cody, there's only two subjects on the board. Which one scares you the most? World history. World history. Yeah, me too. You too? Yeah. Let's not do that. Let's go with fifth grade social studies. Fifth grade social studies. Listen carefully. Don't answer too quickly. Okay. The $300,000 question is this. To become a US Senator, a person must be at least how many years old? To become a U.S. Senator, a person must be at least how many years old? Cody has locked in his answer. To become a U.S. Senator, a person must be at least how many years old? What are you thinking? I'm thinking 35. Okay, let's talk about where we are right now. Right now in your pocket, you have $175,000. If you're right, you go up to $300,000. If you're wrong, you drop down to $25,000. Yeah. I'm gonna go with my gut. And if I get it wrong, maybe he'll save me. Okay, it's a lot of money. Real life money, not just a number on a board. Five, thirty-five, forty. I'm gonna lock it in at thirty-five. Let's see what your classmate Cody said. Let's see if he can save you. He said 35. So he cannot save you if you are wrong. How you feeling? I'm so nervous, man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Good news is he agrees with you. The bad news is, if you're wrong, you're giving back $150,000. Hey, yeah. Let's see what McKenzie said. McKenzie said, 30 years old, 35 to be president. McKenzie. You're right. Tommy Labuda, you just gave back $150,000. Hey. 
Oh. All right, Tommy, one last thing you need to do for me. Tell the world. My name's Tommy Labuda, and I am definitely not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll see you next time. Take care. to somebody that can prove that they are smarter than a 10-year-old. And let's meet my class, Cody! <laughs> Mackenzie! Are you guys ready to meet your new classmate? Yeah. He is a 38-year-old police sergeant who attended Luther Burbank Elementary. Welcome, Jason Kravitz! Hey, guys. Thanks, hey, Jason. Jason, how are you? Welcome to the show. Look what we dug up. Oh. And it says on the card, your nickname in school was Goldilocks. I think I see why. I see why. Wow. <laughs> Fairly obvious, huh? Who would have thought that Goldilocks would grow up to be a real American hero? How about that? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Here's the headlines. Officer saves elderly woman daring rescue. Right. Senior citizen. Thank you. Look at that. Ah, yeah. Oh, wow. Ah. The Medal of Courage, the Medal of Merit, and the Medal of Valor for Life Saving. Wow. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Well, you saved an elderly woman from a burning building. If anybody deserves a shot at a million dollars, it's you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let me tell you how this works. You have five classmates over here. They are all fifth graders. They're going to be taking the same test that you're taking, and we're going to let you cheat off of them. So pick one of them, and let's get started. Ah! Uh, Nathan? Nathan, Nathan, come on up here. All right, buddy. Help me out, bud. OK. All right, buddy. All right, Jason. Let me tell you how this little test works. On the board, you're going to see 10 subjects. They range from first grade through the fifth grade. You can select them in any order you like. Your first correct answer is worth $1,000. The 10th question, should you answer it right, will be worth $500,000. Now, Jason. If any point you start feeling the heat in this test, you can take the money and run. Only one rule. You have to look into that camera and tell the entire world I am not smarter than a fifth grader. I'm hoping not to do that. But we have a deal. <laughs> we have a deal. Let's find out, is Jason Kravitz smarter than a fifth grader? All right, now, Jason. When you attended Luther Burbank Elementary, what was your strongest subject? Geography. Geography. We got a couple of geography questions. Worst subject? Math. Math. <laughs> Luckily, it's a second grade level question. That means nothing, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll pick a subject and let's get started. You okay with geography? Geography and math are my sister. The best? Okay. Second grade geography. Second grade U.S. geography. For $1,000, here's the second grade question. Active volcano Mount St. Helens is in what U.S. state? Active volcano Mount St. Helens is in what U.S. state? <laughs> Classmate Nathan has locked in his answer. Okay. What do we know about volcanoes? Well, I'm pretty sure this one was in Washington State. And I'm going to bite the bullet, so to speak, on this first one. And uh, I'm going to stick with Washington State and lock that in. I will tell you this. This fifth grader has the right answer. You want to see it? Sierra, let me see your answer. <laughs> Take a look at the board. Washington, you got $1,000.
There it is. Everybody in the class had the right answer. All right, let's double that thousand, turn it into two thousand. Let's pick another subject. Okay, you said math. And geography. And, ge and geography. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with third grade world geography. Third grade world geography. <laughs> you have a little different strategy. Most people start at the bottom and work their way up. You have jumped the first grade questions. First All grade right. Of math. For $2,000, Jason, here's the third grade question. The South Pole is located on which continent? The South Pole is located on which continent? Nathan has locked in his answer. Okay, uh, let's see, would that be Antarctica? Is that the south one? What's the, the pole, North Pole, South? Uh, thanks. Sometimes it's, they seem too obvious that you're scared you're gonna throw out an answer that's way off base. Um, you're scared. You're the guy that ran into a burning building. <laughs> and you're scared of the third grade question. Jeff, I'm in uniform on national <laughs> TV. <laughs> So, yeah, this is going to be hard to live yeah, down at the station. Yeah, it? this is, especially if I go out on the second question. Um, I'm going to answer, and I'm hoping if I'm wrong, Nathan's going to jump to my defense and save me, be my partner in this one. So, Jeff, I'm going to lock it in, and I'm going to say Antarctica. Draw it out, Jeff. <laughs> I can't believe you're nervous. This, this is just a work. This is, <laughs> this is different. Jason, you're absolutely right. You got two thousand yeah. dollars. Thanks, buddy. Good job. Thank you. And even if you had been wrong, he could have saved you because he had Antarctica ah. as well. All right. All right. Okay. We got the first two out of the way. See how easy this is? Okay. Time to pick another classmate. <laughs> Olivia? Olivia! Olivia! Isn't this kind of funny that this makes him nervous? <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't make me nervous, but running into a burning building would. So yeah. we're opposites. But... Okay, we'll, we'll trade off for this yeah. time. Though. Trade off. <laughs> All right, Olivia, there's eight okay. subjects up there. We need to help this guy win a million dollars. Which two would you recommend? Um, animal science, math, and U.S. history. Okay. First grade, second grade, and third grade, Jason. Okay, let's, uh, no math. <laughs> uh, let's go with uh, first grade social studies. First grade yeah. social studies? First grade. Yeah. All right. This one's worth $5,000. Here's the question. In the US, which is the title for the official elected to run a state, mayor, senator, or governor? In the US, which is the title for the official elected to run a state, mayor, senator, or governor? Olivia has locked in. Now, after you got your heroic medals, I would imagine that you heard from all of these people. I did, Jeff. <laughs> I'm pretty confident in my answer to this question. Um, Very proud of you. The, it's a uh, first grade question. <laughs> it, was that sarcasm? Nah. <laughs> you know, because I can write you a ticket later. <laughs> uh, oh, don't do that. <laughs> I'm trying to help you win a million dollars. Okay, you are. You're my friend today. Uh, okay, so the official elected to run a state, that would be the uh, governor, and in California that would be Schwarzenegger, so I'm gonna lock that in. Governor. I would hate to have to say, hasta la vista, baby. Luckily I don't have to, because you're right, you got $5,000. Crazy. All right. Who do you have here today cheering you on? I've got my mother in the audience. And then I'm on. And my little brother, who's also a police officer. A police? Yeah. Well, Mom, you, mu you must be very proud. 
Both sons are police I am. officers. <laughs> now, Mom, I'm sure you're a fan of the show. Have you seen anybody go home with a million dollars yet on our show? No. I want today to be the day. Today. Seven subjects remain, Jason. Time. Okay, uh, Olivia said animal science was pretty good. Okay, let's go with first grade animal science. First grade animal science. We are playing for $10,000 when we come back. fifth grader, our contestant, Jason Kravitz, saved an elderly woman from a burning building. That made you less nervous than this test is making you right now, isn't is it? Is it that obvious? <laughs> <laughs> You've got $5,000, Jason. For your $10,000 question, you selected first grade animal science. Are you ready? I'm ready, Jeff. For $10,000, here's the question. The koala is a native to what country? The koala is a native to what country? The koala is native to what country? Olivia has locked in. What do we know about koalas? Well, Jeff, I've been to Australia five times, and I think I'm gonna retire there. And I see them all over the place there, so I'm really hoping they're indigenous to that country only. And, uh, we're gonna be real stupid talking this long about it if it's wrong, but <laughs> let's uh, <clears throat> let's say Australia, and if I'm wrong, hopefully Olivia's got the right answer, so I'm gonna lock in and say Australia. So you wanna retire there? I do, Jeff. A million dollars would go a long way towards that. Yes, it would go a long way there. Well, we are on the way, because you are right, yeah. you've got $10,000. And she could have saved you because she said Australia oh, as well. Sweet. Good job, Thanks Olivia. Anyway. Now, you said that was going to be real embarrassing. I, I see here on the card you actually had an embarrassing moment when you were in school growing up. I only can guess what you're about to say right now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it says here that one time that you laughed so hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, I, I've peed my pants in school. Has everyone else done that? <laughs> uh, uh, come on, yeah. Yes. The police officer peed his pants. Well, we don't want any embarrassing moments in this classroom, and so far you've got both your cheats left, you're safe, you're All doing right. great. We're about to play for 25,000. It's time to pick another classmate. Sierra? Sierra! All right, sweetheart. All right, let's do it. <laughs> we have six subjects on the board, Jason. Which okay. one would you like? Sierra, what are we good at? Second grade math and third grade U.S. History. History and math. Okay, let's go with second grade math. Second grade math. Yeah, let's do the math. <laughs> this one really scares you, doesn't it? Jeff, sometimes I forget what fractions are. Well, good thing you've got some help in here. Okay. This is a big question, because you get this one right. Yeah. No matter what else happens here tonight, you are leaving with at least $25,000, okay? <laughs> I know you're scared. We're gonna face this together <laughs> for $25,000. Here's the second grade math question. True or false, when you divide 30 by four, there is no remainder. True or false, when you divide 30 by four, there is no remainder. Sierra has locked in her answer. So is this the point where I admit to you where I read it and thought, what's a remainder? <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll take confessions, why not? They're praying, why not? <laughs> okay, so if I do four times seven, that's 28, that's gonna leave me with two. Um, obviously that would be 
a remainder of two. Uh, there is no remainder. Okay, so that's gonna be false because there is a remainder. Lock it in. You know what amazed me is you were working the double finger cross on a second grade question. <laughs> 30 divided by four is seven. With a remainder of two, you got $25,000. Thanks, sweetheart. Uh, a lot of people leave here with nothing. You are leaving with at least $25,000. Yes. Yeah. You have both your cheats left. You have okay. your saved left. You're in a good place. <laughs> this next question is worth $50,000. <laughs> this question is a great one because even if you miss it, you leave with 25, which yes. is what you have right now. Perfect. Time to pick another subject. Are you, history or science? History. History? Okay. Third grade U.S. history. Third grade U.S. history. Don't answer too quickly. You have a lot of help in this classroom. For $50,000, the question is coming up when we come back. All right, all right. Coming up next. This one's going to stump me. I'm really looking stupid right, right now. Can't take much more of this. Is this the end for our brave do gooder? Is it that obvious? Find out if Jason runs for cover. This is very dangerous. Or breaks the bank. All right. Next on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Officer Jason Kravitz, saved an elderly woman from a burning building. Right now, tonight, you've got $25,000. You are playing for $50,000. For $50,000, here's the question. What American scientist is credited with inventing bifocals? What American scientist is credited with inventing bifocals? Sierra has locked in her answer. There's no reason not to answer the question, even if you had to guess, because the worst thing that could happen is you leave with 25, so you're not really giving money back. Well, uh, Jeff, I, I, I really have no idea. This one's, this one's gonna stump me. And what grade level am I on, third? Yes. If you had to guess, what would you say? What, Bausch and Loam, one of those two, <laughs> so. <laughs> Can you name any American inventors? Benjamin Franklin? He is one. I have no idea. Okay, um, well here's your options. Okay. You could peek at her paper, see if you like her answer. You could copy her paper, which means you have to take her answer. You could guess, and if you're wrong, maybe she could save you. I think I'm going to uh, peek at her paper, and I'm going to lock that in. I'm going to peek. You want to peek? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what your fifth grade classmate said. What American scientist is credited with inventing bifocals? This fifth grader said, Benjamin Franklin. Oh, I think I know the answer now. <laughs> I'm going to take that answer, and I am going to also say Benjamin Franklin and lock that in. Hey, we could be right. He's the only one I could think of. Well, don't say that. <laughs> Apparently, um, there's a club like that going yes. around. 
You went with that because it was the only one you could think of. Okay, true, guilty. Sierra said it was the only one she could think of. Did Thomas Edison cross oh. your mind? No. But it just might cross my mind now. If you had to do it all over again, what would you say? I'd probably say Benjamin Franklin, because didn't Thomas Edison do electricity? I think that was Benjamin Franklin with the kite. OK. <laughs> Thank goodness I have a job. Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, which should be going off over the top of your yeah. head about now. <laughs> Let's get it over with. If you had to do it all <laughs> over again, you'd still say Benjamin Franklin. Well, probably not now that you're talking me into Thomas Edison, but. I'm not talking you into anything because <laughs> Benjamin Franklin invented bifocals. She's right. You're right. You got $50,000. <laughs> uh, come here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is the only place I can mess with a police officer. I'm kind of enjoying yeah. this. We have four subjects remaining. Mm. You have two classmates remaining. Pick one of them and let's play for $100,000. Mackenzie? Mackenzie! <laughs> oh, is this making you nervous? I think he's going to go to the million. All right. Oh, all right. All right, Mackenzie. Four subjects. If you had to help him with two of them, what would you say? Uh, um, I would say literature and science. Ugh. Literature and science, she said. Both fourth grade questions. We're going to find out what Jason picks when we come back. Grader. Our contestant, Jason Kravitz, has got $50,000. You are a certified American hero. If anybody deserves a million dollars, it's you. Wow, thank you. Wow. You have four subjects remaining for $100,000. What would you like? You know, M Mackenzie, let's go with fourth grade science. Fourth grade science. We're in big money territory, okay? Listen carefully before you answer, because you can still hear the question and drop out of school. Okay. For $100,000, here's the fourth grade science question. Oh, it's a classroom club question. You're gonna like this. <laughs> I am. Awesome. This was sent in to us by Daniel from Pine Brook Elementary School. And because we selected Daniel's question, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader is sending Pine Brook Elementary School a computer lab. How about that? <laughs> Thanks for the question, Daniel. Let's see what this fourth grader sent. What is the name for the process by which plants make their own food? Photosynthesis, oxidation, or mitosis? What is the name for the process by which plants make their own food? Photosynthesis, oxidation, or mitosis? McKinsey has locked in her okay. answer. Jeff, it's either A or C, I think, and, and my guesstimate on this is gonna be A. Photosynthesis. How do you say that? Photosynthesis? Say that five times fast. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I can't say it once. So I'm going to say A and lock that in. And now, now you've got that look. <laughs> you went with a word you can't even pronounce. <laughs> so what made you decide against mitosis? Mitosis. Isn't that something to do with the cells? 
Mitosis. I've worn these cowboy boots so long, mitosis hurting real bad. <laughs> Definitely box worthy. That was good. <laughs> Thank you. You went with A, photosynthesis. I gave you a chance to drop out with $50,000. Yeah. You do have a save left. I do. Let's see if she can save you. What is the name for the process by which plants make their own food? Your classmate Mackenzie said, photosynthesis. She can't say. We're at one of those points in the show where I just start to feel terrible. Okay. Well. I feel bad for the kid. I feel bad for the contestant. I just feel bad. That is, unless you're both right, which you are, and you got $100,000. by photosynthesis. Yes. You still have your copy and you still have a save. You have one fourth grade and two fifth grade questions remaining. Which one would you like? Fourth grade literature. Fourth grade literature. The fourth grade question worth $175,000 is gonna be revealed when we come back. Welcome back to a special night on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Officer Jason Kravitz, Thank you. saved an elderly woman from a burning building. Right now, tonight, he has already won $100,000. We are about to play for $175,000. You selected fourth grade literature. Yes. The $175,000 question is, who wrote the book, Little House on the Prairie? Who wrote the book, Little House on the Prairie? Your classmate Mackenzie has locked in her answer. She locked that in pretty fast, didn't she? She did. Um, did you ever read Little House on the Prairie? I didn't, but I've seen the show. I think it's Alcott. Well, you do have a cheat. You have a copy remaining. And a safe. And a safe. Um. Talk it out. What's going through your mind? Well, she jumped in my mind right away. Um, Alcott did. So I'm hoping that if I'm wrong, I've got my save left. Uh, I'm going to say Alcott, and I'm going to lock that in. Oh boy. Who wrote the book, <laughs> Little House on the Prairie? In all honesty, I know I've been messing with you a little bit, having fun, but I will tell you this, Alcott is not right. And I'm not messing with you now. <laughs> we stand at the $175,000 question and you just answered it incorrectly. I wanna see what the class said. This is a pretty smart class. Laura Ingalls Wilder, oh, Laura yeah, Ingalls yeah, yeah. Wilder, Laura Ingalls Wilder, Laura Ingalls Wilder. They're right. I'll count with little women, huh? Yeah. Little something, I know. Little something. <laughs> so we know Laura Ingalls Wilder is the answer. If Mackenzie didn't write that, you're walking out of here with $25,000. You who saved the elderly woman. <laughs> needs a child to save you. For $175,000, Officer Kravitz, this fifth grader said, Laura Ingalls Wilder! Neil, Neil! Matt! Matt! 
Oh. How you feeling? Can't take much more of this. <laughs> uh, you can't take much more of this. We just gave you $175,000. Real money. Not just a number on a board. Real money, $175,000. You have one classmate remaining. Cody, come on up Cody. here. Cody. Here, buddy. Now, on the million dollar question, once you see the question, you have to answer it. Right now, you can see the question and still drop out of school. Yes. With $175,000. Only two subjects remain. Cody, history or ancient cultures? Both. Whoa. Okay. Ancient cultures. Fifth grade. Ancient okay. cultures. All right. The fifth grade ancient cultures right. question. Yeah. Worth $300,000 is, according to Greek myth, what did Prometheus steal from the gods and give to mankind? According to Greek myth, what did Prometheus steal from the gods and give to mankind? <laughs> According to Greek myth, what did Prometheus steal from the gods and give to mankind? Cody's locked in his answer. He stole something, you're a cop. <laughs> Jeff, I don't know who Prometheus was. Um, so it's a cold case. It's a cold case. Uh, well, and if I copy Cody and Cody's wrong, then I go back to 25. Yeah, oh. it, which means you would give back $150,000. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Read the question once. Tell me what's okay. coming to your mind. According to Greek myth, what did Prometheus steal from the gods and give to mankind? Uh, I have no idea. So, um, you know, I, I don't want to give up $125,000, so I think, oh, I don't want to say this in front of the camera, but Jeff, I'm going to drop out of school. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop out. Uh, I am thrilled that a certified American hero is walking out of here with $175,000. Awesome. Man in uniform. In a weird twist of fate, according to Greek myth, what did Prometheus steal from the gods and give to mankind? When you won the Medal of Valor, what did you run into? Was it fire? <laughs> fire is the correct answer. Oh, but you still have $175,000. Congratulations, Jason. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, unfortunately, in this classroom, you do not have the right to remain silent. Yes. You know what you have to do. There's the camera. Uh, my name's Jason Kravitz. I'm an officer and a hero, but I'm not smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> a police officer and a hero, but you got $175,000, and we'll be right back. Congratulations. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Are you guys ready to meet your new classmate? Yeah! He is a 26-year-old finance specialist from Los Angeles. He attended Parthenia Elementary. Welcome, Jimmy Fan. <laughs> Jimmy, how are you? Nice Welcome good. to the show. Thank you, thank you. Good to meet you. Look at little Jimmy oh, Fan. No, no. Now, Jimmy, when you, when you were a student at Parthenia Elementary, what, what kind of student were you? Uh, not the best student, but a pretty good student. But a pretty good student. <laughs> best subjects? I loved math. math? I, was, I was always a numbers person. So. And worst subject? 
I would have to say geography. Geography. <laughs> Jimmy, welcome to the show. These are your new classmates. They're going to be taking the same test you're taking, and you can cheat off of them. So pick one of them. Let's get started. Sierra. Sierra, come on up here. Now, at any point, you can drop out of our little school, take the money that you've acquired and run, but one little stipulation. See the camera over there? Before you leave, you have to look into it and tell the entire planet I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Uh -huh. Okay, I promise to do that. We got a deal. <laughs> All right. Let's find out, is Jimmy Fan smarter than a fifth grader? All right, Jimmy. Ten subjects on the board. Pick your poison. The first one's worth a thousand dollars. Let's try first grade measurements. First grade measurements for one thousand dollars, Jimmy. Here's the first grade question. How many pennies are equal to one U.S. dollar? How many pennies are equal to one U.S. dollar? Sierra has locked in her answer. All righty. How many pennies are equal to one U.S. dollar? I didn't even know they had pennies anymore. <laughs> but uh, I am, believe it is 100, and I will lock in my answer. Jimmy, I believe you got $1,000. Yeah. We are on the way. All right. Nice. Nice. See how easy it is? Oh, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> Let's double it right now, Jimmy. There's nine subjects left. Pick another one. I got to go first grade English. First grade English. All right. For $2,000, the first grade English question is, what is the last consonant in the modern English alphabet? What is the last consonant in the modern English alphabet? Your classmate, Sierra, has locked in her answer. What is the last consonant in the modern English alphabet? I'm going to go with Z, and I'm going to lock in my answer. Ah. Oh. bit of hesitation there. Yeah, I, I'm a math guy. I'm a numbers guy. <laughs> Z's the right answer. You got 2,000 bucks. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Come on. Woo! Woo! Thank you. Bye, so Sierra. Much. Thank you. Hey, we got English out of the way oh, already. I know. Uh, now, Jimmy, who, who do you have cheering you on in the audience today? Uh, I have my mom. My brother and my good, good friend along. So how you guys doing? Are you a little bit nervous? No. Uh, no, no, not a bit? He, our boy's doing well. Yeah, he's doing great. Hey. All right, you need to pick another classmate now, Jimmy. I will go with Mackenzie. Mackenzie! Come on, Mackenzie. Come on, yeah! Let's do this. All right, Jimmy, what do you think? I'm gonna go with second grade music. Second grade music. The question is worth $5,000. And here it is. How many finger buttons are there on a standard orchestral trumpet? How many finger buttons are there on a standard orchestral trumpet? Mackenzie has locked in her answer. How many finger buttons are there on a standard orchestral trumpet. Do you play any instruments? Uh, piano. And that doesn't really help me no, here. No, <laughs> not, not really. But I believe there are three, and I will lock in my answer.
Jimmy. All five of these guys have the right answer. And all five of them said three. You got $5,000. Yeah! One, two, three. Your next correct answer is worth 10000 Jimmy, so let's pick one. All right. Um, hey, I'm going to go to second grade world geography. Second grade world geography. Let's go. Let's do this. And you did say that geography was your worst subject in school, right? Yeah, but I'm, I'm relying on my... Count on Miss McKenzie. <laughs> All right. We are playing for $10,000 next time on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Bye, everybody. Oh, yeah. Bye.